Today I'm going to cover as much of this article that I found on Android Police called 15 Chrome OS Tips and Tricks for Your New Chromebook. We're going to go through them one at a time and try to get in as many as we can. I'm Huey Poplock. Now, when we start this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up Print Friendly because this will give us a much easier read from the article. It takes out all of the ads and we could increase the print so you can read it a little bit better along with me. Chromebooks make wonderful computers for many people due to their relatively low price tags and ease of use. Our favorite Chromebooks add other great features to the Chromebook experience, such as a touchscreen, included stylus, or a fingerprint sensor. Chrome OS, the operating system on Chromebooks, has many fun and useful features that make for a great user experience. And here is the author's favorite Chrome OS features that every Chromebook user should know. Gesture with your touchpad. There are several ways to move around Chromebooks, whether you use a touchpad, a keyboard, or a touch screen if you have one. The Chrome OS makes your touchpad more useful than just using a mouse by including gestures to make moving around your device easier. The first one on this list is tap the touchpad with two fingers simultaneously to right click, and you only tap it once. But when you do, wherever your mouse is, that's the right mouse click that you see. The second one is put two fingers on the touchpad and move them up or down to scroll. Put two fingers on the touchpad and move them left or right to go forward or back in Chrome. Swipe up with three fingers to see all your open windows. Swipe down with three fingers to go back to your last open window. Open a link by tapping it with three fingers. Close a Chrome tab by tapping it with three fingers. Put three fingers on the touchpad and move them left or right to move through your Chrome tabs. And then finally in this list, and there's a lot more, Switch between your desks if you use multiple desks by swiping left or right with four fingers. So by using your fingers, you can move around your screen easier than using the, the mouse just by using your touchpad. You can also control your Chromebook with your keyboard. In addition to the gestures available by using your touchpad, you can do a ton with the keyboard shortcuts. You can use your keyboard to do anything from refreshing the page to opening a new tab. To see a list of the available keyboard shortcuts, simultaneously press Control, Alt, and the question mark. And the most used ones are Control T, which opens a new tab, Control Tab closes the current tab. Control Shift Tab opens the last tab you closed. Control Tab and Control Shift Tab moves through your tabs. And then Alt Tab moves you through your windows. And Search L locks your computer. And don't forget Control C is copy, Control V is paste. The next item, take your screen for a spin. This is a fun thing. Chrome OS aims to be productive and a fun operating system. So Google included some amusing features that don't serve a purpose. The best of these is the ability to do a barrel roll. To do this, you click on the Control, Shift, Alt, and Rotate button and, and watch it spin. Now the Rotate button is it's got the circle like a refresh key, and it is the refresh key. So we're going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and the Rotate button, and that's what it does, and that's it. But 
it's fun to do. So again, control, alt, shift, and the refresh button. And that's it. Anyway, have fun. Turn on the caps lock without a dedicated key. Most people are used to using a Windows or a Mac computer, which have dedicated caps lock keys. Chromebook keyboards are a bit different and do not have a dedicated caps lock key. Still, there's a way to turn on caps lock with the keyboard. You press the Alt search at the same time and the caps lock is on. You press that same key combination again and that turns it off. So it's the Alt search or sometimes called the everything button, but it's the Alt and search or Alt and everything at the same time that will turn on the caps lock. You do it again, that turns it off. Quickly open pinned apps and websites. Much like the taskbar on Windows or the dock on Macs, Chromebooks have a space at the bottom of the screen where you can save apps and websites you access often. This is called a shelf in the Chrome OS, and there are a couple of ways to access these items. You can tap them with the mouse to open them or use the keyboard access for the first 10 items on your shelf. To do this, you press the Alt and the number of the keyboard corresponding to the item you want to open. For example, to open the fifth item on your shelf, you tap Alt-5. In this case, we're going to open down here at the bottom the third one, which is this one right here. Hopefully you can see that in the recording. But I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit 3, and it will open up my Gmail. And that's it. Reposition your shelf. Speaking of the shelf, if you don't like having it at the bottom of the screen, the Chrome OS allows you to move it, unlike Windows 11. To do so, you right click on your home screen, mouse over the shelf position, and either select left, bottom, or right. So let's try that. We're gonna right mouse click here, shelf, shelf position. We can go to the left, and you'll see it here over on the left. Click it again. I can put it on the right, and it shoved me over a little bit. We'll do it again, shelf position. And this time we'll put it back on the bottom. That's it for repositioning your shelf. Take advantage of desks. Chromebooks include a great feature called desks, which allows you to have different desktops for different tasks that you're trying to accomplish. For example, if you're working but want to play a game, you can create a desk with your work items and create a separate desk to play your game. Then you won't have to deal with all of those windows. This next one I'm going to attempt to do live, or as I read, we're going to record it live, and it's get notifications from your phone or on your Chromebook. I'm going to attempt to do this live and record it as I'm doing it. Hopefully it's going to work. This is getting notifications from your phone on your Chromebook. Chromebooks pair well with Android phones since there are integrations between the two devices through a Chromebook feature called Phone Hub. One of the most useful features in the ability to access your phone notifications on your Chromebook. Connect your phone to your Chromebook, enable the notification feature, and you're ready to go. So let's go to the support for Google, and we're going to go to connect your Android phone to your Chromebook. You can do more with your Chromebook when you can connect your Android phone. You can sync chat notifications, you can share files, you can send and receive text messages on your Chromebook, you can connect your Chromebook to your phone network, and you can unlock your Chromebook uh, with your phone. What you need is the Chrome OS version 71 and up, and I'm on 111. So we're good there. And the Android version needs to be 5.1 and up, and I'm on version 12. 
and you can check to see how you can find those by clicking on this page. A Google account that you're signed into, which we are, on both your phone and your Chromebook. Hopefully that's the case, because I have several Google accounts. If you use your Chromebook at work or school, you may not be able to use these features with your phone. For more information, contact your administrator if there is one. Now, the first part of this is uh, connect your phone during the Chromebook setup. Well, we've already set it up. We've been using it. So what we're going to do is come down here to connect your phone anytime. So at the bottom right, select the time. Let's see. Uh, uh, this is during the Chromebook. Okay. Come over here. Select the time and then select settings. And that's right here. It's going to cover that. I'm going to move it out of the way here as soon as it comes up. And select the settings, which I did. Then under connected devices, next to the Android phone, click setup. And next to convert, there we go. And then we want to set up right here. Next to Android phone, we're going to click setup. Connect to your phone. So it knows my phone. It sees my phone. When you connect your device, you will... Agree that your Chromebook can sync Wi-Fi networks with your phone, can access your phone's camera roll, and offer new features as they become available. So we're going to tell it to accept and continue. Now it wants the password, and I have to remember what it is. This is a security for security reasons. Okay, all set. Go to settings to see your options for better together. So it's done. Let's see what that means. Yeah, there it is. It's disabled. We have to turn it on. And let's do that. And again, I have to put in my password. And confirm. Okay, it's now enabled. Now let's go back to the article and see what we have to do next. Well, it just tells us how to disconnect it. Let's come back to the article. And down here at the bottom, it says, once this feature is enabled, at any time you get a notification on your phone, it pops up on your notifications on your Chromebook. I don't know if I can show that or not. I guess I can't, but it will show up. Let's see if it even puts one up there now. Uh, yeah, it says you're sharing your screen. But uh, if I get something on my phone as a notification, it will show up on my Chromebook now. If it's a message, you could reply to it from your Chromebook. This is an incredibly useful feature because you can use your Android phone while you're on your Chromebook without having your Android phone next to you. So you can have it charging on your charger in the other room. And when you get a message, you can answer it. I want to add a little bit more to the feature of connecting it to the phone hub. And let's take a look at settings. We go to settings. We're going to come down here to connected devices. And you'll see next to my phone, there's a little arrow to the side that has more choices here. But right now, we have enabled the phone connection. We also have Smart Lock, which is unlocking your Chromebook with your phone. And that's turned on. So I can do that. I can do instant tethering, but I don't have that on. And then under the phone hub, there are some things we can do. Access your phone's capabilities from your Chromebook. We've turned that on. We also have the recent Chrome tabs, and that's turned on. And then we have the recent photos, and we need to set that up. And then I already mentioned that you can see notifications from my phone. Let's go ahead and set up the recent photos and see if we can make this work. Be more productive when you connect your phone to your Chromebook. View your phone's photos and media. And let's see, make sure your phone is close by, is unlocked. So let me just go ahead and unlock it. I've got my phone right here. And... Uh, Let's go back to the 
screen here. And now we're going to say next. If I get a, something on my screen, I don't think you can see it too well, but it's asking me to uh, allow access to recent photos, and I click on allow. And you can now view your recent photos and media, and it's saying done. Now, I'm not sure how we do that. But we can, and we've got Wi-Fi sync as well. So, but let's go ahead and figure out how we do that. So I am going to guess that it's going to be in files. And then we're going to have photos there, but I'm not sure. Oh, let's see if there's photos here, but that's on here. That's not on my phone. So I'm not sure how we do that. In order to do anything with the phone hub, you'll notice now we have a phone down here at the bottom in the shelf, and it says phone hub. When we click on it, it gives us some things to see. We can see that my phone is 61% uh, battery level, and I can see something with the access to the internet, and I can go to settings here. I'm not going to do that yet. I can enable the hotspot if I needed to on the phone. I can silence the phone and I can locate the phone. And then down here I have recent photos and there's four showing here. If I click on one of them, I can download them. So I can look, but I don't know if I can get more than just the recent ones. Let's look at the settings here. This is what we had, so that's not it. I wanted to explain a few things about the pairing of the phone. I did find out that it will only take four pictures at the bottom. And in order to really move files and photos, you really need to turn on nearby share. Now, I've already turned it on to test it, to be able to tell you that today. So let's look at more information about the nearby share. What I had to do is go ahead, set it up to talk to my phone and the device, this device, and then pair them. You can make it either visible to everyone or you can change the visibility to either some contacts, hidden, or all contacts. And I made it only visible to me. And see if I can just turn that off. I guess I have to save it. There's no other way. You can change the device name, but I've already got it. I'm saying it's the Chromebook. So when my phone sees it, it's going to see it as the Chromebook. And then the contacts, the data usage, and there's nothing there I need to worry about. So it was just turning on the nearby share and then putting in the information to have the phone be able to see it then what you can do is put the phone near it it they'll recognize and talk to each other using bluetooth and then you can copy files or photos over using bluetooth that's it for the tips for today my name is huey poplock and this has been some tips and tricks with your chromebook